All right, I haven't done a proper um, overview on this thing yet, so let me go over that. We'll start here with the electronics, the cool part. <clears throat> this circuit board with the big heat sinks and all the wires coming into it. That's the motor controller. It's the Sabertooth 2x25, whatever the hell it's called. It's pretty badass. Um, I was I was especially excited when it started working. Um, they do say be careful when you power it up. You can destroy it. Those middle two is the power in. And if you get it backwards, suppose it says in big red bold print, you can destroy this unit. So be careful about that. This cover is held in with Beetle Mastic, which is just some really sticky stuff. Um, I did not want to go through all the hassle of making it permanent. And enough oozed over to actually hold on to that. Which, that's a Hobby King. Um, let's see if I can focus. It's a Hobby King receiver. I'll show you the transmitter here in a second. It's six channels in. And I got the programming kit for it, but I haven't programmed it yet, so it's just stock. It's 2.4 gigahertz. One of the good things about 2.4 gigahertz is, um, you can see the antenna here. The good thing is it there's a signal that um, when the transmitter stops transmitting, the receiver is aware of it, which is really good in an application like this, because when you stop receiving, you want it to do something. And in this case, the um, motor controller is smart enough to know that uh, when it stops receiving to stop going which is really cool so uh, like the guy in the make magazine had a whole separate controller for or an Arduino controller uh, I just had to work out of the box like that um, here you can see it's a uh, terminal breakout by the way this tray is a, an old CD-ROM tray and it's just a piece of plexiglass held on with mastic and the reason for this is not because I designed it that way, it's just what I had laying around. So you see these red wires come out, I got a kill switch. So I flick it on, ooh, pretty lights. That lets you know that the saber tooth is on. Turn it off, and it'll cut off. And it's pretty cool, it's orange with a toggle switch. It's got that military or racing thing, or even though you open this, you know, you may not have the toggle on. It's really cool. Got that from a friend um, on a computer case. That was his master power button, which is really cool. So I've got two sets of batteries here. Um, the batteries that this thing came with were regular car size batteries. You can see them over there. They're full size car size batteries. So I got two sets, one because it was cheaper. They wanted $50 a set for these, whereas they wanted $100, $140 a set for the big ones. So I'm sure I lost a little bit of capacity, but <laughs> even said he was checking out the wheel and says it stinks. I'm sure I lost a little bit of capacity, but I also saved 40 bucks. And considering that the ones that came with the wheelchair were dead, um, it kind of sucks. So you see this uh, breaker here. This came with the wheelchair. Um, this is wiring I've reused uh, from the wheelchair. This, these two here, these big ones, are wiring I've re reused from a giant Motorola dumb terminal server that I got many years ago. And this thinner gauge, 12 gauge wire here is new. Um, I've got this, this rear set here of batteries. Uh, wired for 24 volts and this set this battery is in parallel with this one yeah this one's in parallel with this one and that one's in parallel with this one so that puts only these two in series so that puts the whole bank at 24 volts output I'm hoping <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. So, everyone knows that these things kind of breaks. Um, you can see I've got the brake on top. Now, normally it's held on by a zip tie, but that zip tie keeps coming off. 
Uh, I'm going to remove the brakes until I actually go get an Arduino and program it to control the brakes. Um, which may be tomorrow, I don't know, maybe in a couple weeks. Arduinos are nice and cheap, but I still don't know how to do relays. Probably needs a relay board. So we'll go from there. I know Micro Center, which is the only place I know around here that has an Arduino, doesn't have a relay board. So even if I go get the Arduino, I couldn't get the relay board. Um, which, let's see, if you notice here, these the big wires for the motor. On the other side, you can see it, you got smaller wires. Those are for the motor controller. Uh, not motor controller. Brakes. So, regular automotive relays controlled by a, an Arduino controlled relay should be fine for that because they're rated at like 30 or 40 amps. Alright, now this... Um, this video comes after I just mowed most of the backyard with it. <clears throat> well, not most. Well, less than half. So, these welds here are uh, what I did to take the bed frame, which is that angle iron you're looking at, and um, attach it to the wheelchair. Now, this bed frame shit is so fucking hard. Forget about fucking drilling. Cause originally, I was going to drill some holes and I was going to weld up this here and then bolt, put like a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here or something. This way I could take it apart if need be. But, damn, that dog shit stinks. But because the bed frame is so ridiculously hard to drill through, um, I just said fuck it and welded it. Because it welds great. Um, here you can see, well, I'll keep it right side up. I've got a, uh, I welded a piece, this, okay, that's bed frame, that's a piece of bed frame, bed frame, bed frame, this is part of the wheelchair, that's another piece of bed frame, that's, make sure the batteries don't go too far forward. This is rail for a computer, um, some kind of server thing, it was normally like two feet long, um, I used it because it's got two bends, and I wanted that structural integrity. And it's also a lot thinner. It's, it's about the thickness of a finger as opposed to a whole angle, piece of angle, whatever, that comes out here. All right, and this, uh, this shackle-looking thing, uh, I'm hoping it works like a real shackle does. Um, that's so I can adjust the deck up and down because with two fixed ones of these, the deck wouldn't be able to go up and down. So now I can adjust it up and down, and that's going to get swapped out for a 3 8 inch bolt, like that is eventually. But that's what I put in to get it started with. Uh, I did have to cut this part off of the uh, mower. It had something looking like this. This is, this is from the other side, but this was so the bag could latch in. Actually, no, this, this was so the, uh, the handle would come in. Uh, it was pretty easy to cut through. That's the the thing is the, the bed frame. It's easy enough to cut through with a, a a grinder, but forget about it with a fucking sawzall. Um, I did my welds with flux core, and I haven't really welded. I'm not that experienced of a welder, so and I haven't really cleaned off all the burrs, so that's why they look the way they look. Um. Briggs and Stratton four horsepower mower. Get my cherry coke out of the way. Uh, it's a pretty badass mower. The girl at work gave it to me because she has Mexicans cut her yard. Got a camera zip tied to the front. Uh, that'll be a separate video, uh, separate YouTube video. Um, the. Uh, after a pit stop about halfway through the backyard, I put that on. Because um, I don't have anyone here to be a cameraman, so it's just me. More bed frame, 3 8 inch bolts. These are some casters from uh, Harbor Freight. They're 360 degree casters. That's what allows me to steer with only two motors and not have any kind of steering linkage. And there's dog shit at the bottom of that one. There's the front... Um, bracket to hold the uh, the front of the mower on and you notice it's a little bit longer and there's no shackle shackles back here with actually that shackle this right here is actually the the part of the bed frame 
that would have held the headboard to it. And let's see if you can see. All right, you see how it's angle iron? Uh, well, angle type. And these here, that means I didn't have to drill in it. Now, I, can, I could make it a little bit bigger, no problem. Um, it was almost sized for 3 8 already, so it wasn't a big deal. But the fact is, angled meant it would be stronger. Now, I don't know how this one wound up like that, and that one wound up that way, because that's, that's the way I tightened both of them, was just like that. And this one's backwards. I'm sure that also, because that moves, it's also a little bit better than uh, uh, putting all the force on the, the bracket here. And I did, I tried to weld the shit out of it. Damn, the dog shit smells. Um, but, I mean, there, there's not a whole lot of surface area for it to adhere to. I mean, underneath the second one would have been great, but there's too much of a gap. I might go back and weld that in some more. I don't know front thinking about doing a, uh, a cross from here down towards the bottom on that side and whatever and I also want to do a cross piece across here um, for structural stability because I'm kind of worried that this is gonna well I say that after I just beat the fuck out of it and it's holding up fine but I'm kind of worried that this isn't strong enough to hold the deck in place when I give it hell. Um, the uh, the measurements I made on the front... Damn, the dog shit stinks. Uh, the measurements I made on the front... How the hell am I going to clean that off? I guess I'll hose it off in the front. Um, the measurements I made in front were a little bit um, too short. So I actually had to... You know, this is part of the reason... This bolt hole is too far, far forward, and these two are a little bit short, so I had to push this piece of the frame that way to get that one in. Um, and it's like maybe a quarter of an inch. So rather than cut more bed frame and blah, 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two pieces in half right about where this is, and welded up the right size putting a, a piece of frame probably from there up to here or something uh, I'll do something maybe I'll go buy a piece of uh, square stock from Home Depot and quit being a cheap ass yeah if I was going to do um, like I wanted to this would have been a bolt instead of a weld but this shit was so fucking hard it killed a cobalt set within 5 seconds um, it's ridiculous. Dude at Home Depot kept calling it tempted steel, and I'm like, uh, I think you mean tempered. But it's tempered or hardened or some shit. Uh, let's see. You can see some of the bracketry I welded up here. Is that good or bad? <clears throat> this bottom piece is a uh, piece of bed frame angle iron. And this top piece is another, and that's so that's three pieces of bed frame angle iron welded together to make a rectangular almost tube. Um, yeah, I was a little worried about structural stability. So I, I, I think I used half of a roll of uh, wire. Well, that's a welder over there, actually. Um, it was like two pounds of uh, flux core wire. And um, yeah, I used half of it just on this project. And all the, well, I say that, but there was, uh, we've done a couple other things on that roll, but not much. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. Oh, transmitter. Where did that go? Oh, here it is. This is the transmitter. I bought, uh, bought the trans, I bought most, well, all the electronics new. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's a Hobby King. It's six channel, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, it does have a programming port. Looks like this video. What does it say? It says trainer. Um, takes eight AA batteries, which they're, what is it? They're almost low now. 
yeah it's yellow so they're it's about time to get re them replaced but the transfer and the receiver were 30 bucks which was the best deal I found anywhere um, especially because this RC knowledge is so apparently low level it's not explained very well anywhere so it took me a couple days before I was uh, being new to RC before I was comfortable buying some stuff um, the Sabre motor controller was 2530 bucks. Um, aside from the wheelchair, it was the most expensive part here. Um, this terminal strip was six bucks. So my the one at Home Depot is about six bucks. That strip, that uh, switch over there, depending on where you go, you can find it five or more dollars. Um, they're not cheap. The batteries were fifty dollars a pair. The two rolls of 12 gauge wire I've got over there were I think nine dollars a piece at Fry's. That came with the chair. The chair was 200 bucks. Um, I got the chair there. The top part that uh, didn't help. The extra lawnmower wheels. The lawnmower was free. Um, the wheels were 10 or 15 dollars a piece. Um, what kind of killed me um, as far as budget was all the hardware because the the nuts and bolts and washers and stuff um, you know while individually not very much when you multiply it times 8 10 12 whatever get expensive also the uh, the the ring terminals aren't cheap either and then you need a whole bunch of um, Let's see if I can zoom in. Hey, I can zoom in. Can I focus? Yeah, I went and bought all. I bought. Uh, let me stop so I can speak a little bit. I bought some um, whatever the hell those are called. They're like channel locks, except specialty ones. And I bought some channel locks too. And you can have a grinder and cutting stuff and blah blah blah. I mean, hell, and tools. I've probably got a thousand dollars worth of tools that are required for this project. But that's cool because I got to use all my tools. This is the uh, workbench I've been working on. It's got all kinds of shit: electronics, relays, relays, washers. Once I, um, I'm gonna have to power the uh, electronics aside from the motor controller. I'll go in that over that in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna use 12 volts and then go with uh, some 12 volt stuff. Um, safety equipment, got to have your safety equipment. You'll almost always see me using my safety equipment because I want to keep my eyes and ears functional. There's a tank I tested with initially. Drill bits, cutting implements, drilling implements, extra parts, stuff laying around. Got to have your tune set up. Set the iPhone up with that. Right now I'm on the Evo, which is my, actually my phone. Fan. When the, for when I'm welding, keeps the gas out of my face. Um, yeah, so what I was talking about, right now, stay. Right now, this is drawing power from here. Um, it's kind of weird. If, if you're using greater than 12 volts, it'll supply 10 milliamps of power to, I mean, it's meant for this kind of thing if you're only doing two motor controllers or two motor channels. Um, if you do less than 12 volts, it'll give you 100 milliamps, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm guessing that's just the way it worked out on the, the circuitry in there. Um, but I'm gonna try to do more than two, so that means I need to power this some other way. So I'm gonna have a 12 volt control system, a 12 volt power system to control it. Um, which, because uh, it's going to be really low amperage, I think it'll be fine to just tap off one of the batteries. Or actually, the way this is set up, it would just be one bank of batteries. Well, that works. That's pretty much it. Um, I used the, uh, the Make article to really help me out with the electronics which, I mean, depending on what it is you want to do and how you want to do it, that's probably the only thing you really need help with. Because if you're mechanically inclined, you can figure out the rest. 
I mean, this turned out looking very similar to the make guys, uh, whatever, uh, RC lawnmower. Except I started with a wheelchair instead of just the motors. So I already had the mount points. And it's pretty cool. It's actually got some suspension. Um, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure what it means that the, uh, whenever I engage the motors now, they move about a half inch. Um, I think that might mean I got my load distribution wrong or some shit. But because uh, the bracket, eh, you can't really see. Bracket's just welded to the frame right there. And then it's got this here. Um, and then there's another spot back here. I guess if I wanted to, I could move it back another nine inches or so. And maybe tilt those up sideways or something. I don't know. And re architect things. But it's 20 minutes. Um, that's 20 minutes of me talking. Holy shit. I think I'm going to go uh, rinse off that front wheel.